Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, May 26, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, comparing the world economy to the Titanic, HSBC fears worldwide recession with no lifeboats in a world drowning in debt. Then, a senior NATO official says we'll probably be at war this summer. With any luck, it won't be nuclear. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. According to a senior NATO official, we'll probably be at war this summer. And if we're lucky, it won't be nuclear. Now, this is what was tweeted out by former NSA intelligence analyst John Schindler. And a lot of people are speculating, was he leaked this information in an effort to show the seriousness of what's going on? Uh, Schindler is a former U.S. Naval War College lecturer. He's also known to have many high-level military contacts. Now, he didn't really specify in this tweet, but no doubt the reference was almost certainly in relation to the growing tensions between the U.S. and Russia. Earlier this month, NATO launched its biggest ever war game exercise right on Russia's doorstep. Moscow responded by conducting provocative war games in the Mediterranean Sea. And Russia did this in coordination with the Chinese PLA. So this is the first ever naval drill uh, that involved both superpowers. And the U.S. is also, we're getting some rising tensions between the U.S. and China. Now, the Global Times, which is a state media outlet owned by their ruling Communist Party there, has sent out a warning today saying that war is inevitable if Washington doesn't halt its demands that Beijing stop building artificial islands in the South China Sea. The newspaper said, if the United States' bottom line is that China has to halt its activities, then a U.S.-China war is inevitable and the intensity of the conflict will be higher than what people usually think of as friction. So here we have all of these dire warnings coming out here in just the last few weeks. According to a report from Zero Hedge, a plan might be in the works for a nuclear attack right here on American soil within the next 12 months. Now, this is coming out of uh, the Islamic State magazine. They claim that they are actively pursuing a nuclear weapon, that they have enough money to uh, to purchase this nuclear weapon from Pakistan, and it's intended for detonation on American soil. And they talk about how they could smuggle it right into the U.S. via Mexico. Now, this is all in an article posted in the terrorist group's English language online magazine, Dabiq. Now, British photojournalist John Cantley is the author of that article. You'll recall he was the a photojournalist that was abducted by ISIS in 2012. He's been held hostage ever since and been seen in a series of their propaganda campaigns. Well, he seems to be leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for anyone who's actually reading this article. He gives a hypothetical play-by-play -play of just how ISIS might carry out this nuclear attack, saying, well, we might do this and we might do that. It's almost like the villain in a movie that must reveal exactly how their plan is going to be played out to the victim. Of course, this is then used by the hero in the movie to defeat the the villain in the end. So is this possibly what Cantley is doing here by pumping out this very clear story of this hypothetical scenario of how they might smuggle in a nuclear weapon into the U.S.? So no doubt intelligence agencies are looking at this very seriously because at the end of the day, they backed ISIS to take down Assad, not America, right? However, such, a, such an action in America would actually help with that whole global governance plan because it would usher in a new era of revolutionary change here in the U.S. Just to take a quote out of the Project for a New American Century, it was written in 2000 and it was signed on to by the likes of Jeb Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld says the process of transformation, even if, if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. So, of course, we've heard that again. And so something like a mushroom cloud 
hovering above a, a U.S. city would be something that would usher in this new revolutionary change, of course. So either way, the framework has been set. We're being given warnings by NATO officials. The HSBC is reporting uh, that they're, they're fearing a world recession with no lifeboats left. They say there is absolutely no margin for error as the economy falters. Uh, likewise, Goldman Sachs is warning that the world is drowning in debt. So this poses one of the biggest threats to the global economy. And of course, we reported just two weeks ago that billionaire George Soros was cautioning that the planet was heading towards a third world war uh, if China's economy collapsed. So here we have all of this orchestration from the globalists and the banksters warning us war is coming, something's about to happen. And of course, every time we see the US economy uh, deteriorate toward a recession and you know, a possibility of a mushroom cloud in an American city, the S&P 500 limit shoots way up. So we know that this is all orchestrated. And of course, what happens when the governments are on the verge of economic collapse? They go to war. And that's why we're seeing an increased demand for safe rooms. The elite are getting ready. The wealthy are installing their safe rooms. Uh, worried about riots and civil unrest, which, of course, as we know, is being orchestrated behind the scenes to take place this summer as well. So the notion that the elite are making these preparations for mass civil disorder is not a conspiracy theory. This is actually happening. Elites are actually moving to New Zealand. They're moving out of Russia. Billionaires are moving out of Israel. Uh, this is this is happening. They are preparing. Now it's time that the rest of us start making preparations as well. Uh, you know, obviously food and water, but what are you going to do when the grid goes down? How are you going to communicate with your friends and family? Coming up in the next segment, we're going to talk about a new terrifying EMP weapon that the Air Force is already actively using that could take down the grid in another country. So, of course, you know, if they do something like that, a country is going to only retaliate. Uh, but it's really time that we all need to start making ourselves a little bit more self-sufficient and uh, take back our power. Now, coming up, more scandals for the Clinton campaign. They just seem to surround her. But you will not believe what the mainstream media is choosing to cover. Well, the Air Force has confirmed the use of a terrifying new weapon, CHAMP. And it's a silent missile that can destroy enemy electronics with a microwave pulse. Now, this is according to Foxtrot Alpha. Once integrated, CHAMP will be a first day of war standoff weapon. The aim would be to permanently destroy an enemy's command, control, communication and computing, surveillance and intelligence capabilities without hurting people or infrastructure. So how does CHAMP work? Well, the missile is equipped with an electromagnetic pulse cannon, and this uses a super powerful microwave oven to generate a concentrated beam of energy, and then the energy causes voltage surges in electronic equipment. This renders them useless before surge protectors have a chance to react. And the Air Force confirms that its CHAMP is already an operational system in the tactical Air Force. So, of course, if the U.S. is known to deploy such a weapon, other countries are going to act similarly. You can take a look at a map to see the areas that are likely to be blacked out in the event of a high-altitude nuclear EMP attack on the U.S., like I mentioned earlier, you really need to figure out what you and your family are going to do, how you're going to communicate if the grid goes down and you can see the areas that are really susceptible to, to something like this. But heck, if these countries pay enough money to the Clinton Foundation, you know, the, the, you know, the State Department might just give them this weapon outright, might sell it to them. The International Business Times has reported that governments that donated millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation soon received weapons deals from Hillary Clinton's State Department. Ah, no, it's not a slush fund. There's no, there's no pay to play going on. So despite the fact that the State Department had documented concerns about the repressive policies of the Saudi royal family, Boeing would deliver them $29 billion worth of advanced fighter jets. And just two months before the deal was finalized, Boeing contributed $900,000 to the Clinton Foundation. So that sounds like pay to play to me. Saudi royal family was already donating tens of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation before she uh, became Secretary of State. Now, in fact, Clinton, who she's running this uber feminist campaign, 
asserted that it was in the national interest to make the deal with Saudi Arabia. And the Assistant Secretary of State, Andrew Shapiro, said that the deal had been a top priority for Clinton personally. Now, under Clinton's leadership, the State Department approved $165 billion worth of commercial arms sales to 20 nations whose governments had given money to the Clinton Foundation. So that number is nearly double the value of American arms sales made to those same countries uh, during President George W. Bush's second term. And of course, weapons deals are approved by the State Department. So yes, Clinton was in control of those arms deals. So in all, governments and corporations that were involved in the arms deals approved by Clinton's State Department, it's between $54 million and $141 million to the Clinton Foundation, as well as hundreds of thousands of dollars in payments to the Clinton family. Ah, but there is nothing to see here, folks. Move right along. Nothing to see here because all the mainstream media is reporting on today is Hillary's pantsuit t-shirt. They're just letting you know what you can buy if you visit her campaign store. So she <laughs> makes billions of dollars in arms deals and all we got was this lousy t-shirt. This is the t-shirt for is the woman who has absolutely no style whatsoever. And let's face it, Chairman Mao wore it better. And so you can see right there all the stuff that you can buy uh, if you go and donate to Clinton's campaign. Pantsuits, pillows, onesies for the working mom, and a commemorative glass that's made out of the shattered glass ceilings. So all of this stuff is geared toward women. Meanwhile, very close friends with the Saudi royal family and Saudi Arabia is internationally famous for their human rights atrocities. Ah, but that's okay, you know. She is a feminist and everyone is ready for Hillary. So it was also revealed this week in some secret Pentagon uh, papers, this report was released by Judicial Watch, that the U.S. created ISIS as a tool to overthrow Syria's president, Assad. And the purpose behind the Saudi Arabia-funded Islamic State was a simple one. Use the jihadists as the vehicle of choice to achieve a political goal. Just like the CIA-funded Al-Qaeda had been used as a facade by the U.S. to achieve its own geopolitical and national interests over the past two decades. Despite the U.S.-led air campaign, the size of their fighting force, U.S. officials say... <laughs> is increasing monthly. A 2012 Defense Intelligence Agency document declares the West, Gulf countries, and Turkey supported the opposition in Syria, namely Al-Qaeda in Iraq, precursor to ISIS. Right there, in the Pentagon's own words, Al-Qaeda and ISIS were created to isolate the Syrian regime. Uh, confirmed U.S. operation rooms backing Al-Qaeda in Syria, U.S. policy think tank Brookings, institution confirms that contrary to propaganda, U.S. Saudi moderates and Turkey Qatar Islamicists have been coordinating all along. And then they're coordinating and commanding the groups in America, the U.K., and the E.U. So do you understand? I've told you this 500 times in the last four years or more. 500 is conservative. Mainstream media answers with giving credence to an article in the ISIS magazine, Da Beak, that states First Lady Michelle Obama would be worth $40 on the terror group's slave market. Can you smell the stench of propaganda? The article was allegedly penned by a jihadi bribe said to be an ISIS recruiter of young women. The Michelle Obama as jihadi sex slave story is merely another outrageous and sensationalistic propaganda piece among countless propaganda pieces and thus build consensus for more direct military intervention in the Middle East, primarily in Syria, where the Bashar al-Assad regime continues to remain in power despite the effort of the U.S., the Gulf Emirates, and Turkey. The August 2013 DIA report predicted ISIS would declare a caliphate in Iraq and Syria. It stated this was exactly what the supporting powers of the opposition want in order to isolate the Syrian regime, which is considered the strategic depth of the Shia expansion. As noted, the supporting powers are the West, 
led by the United States and the Gulf Emirates and Turkey. The United States knew the opposition was dominated by jihadist elements it repeatedly described as moderate and would ultimately coalesce into what is now called the Islamic State. The Pentagon report accurately describes the fall of both Mosul and Ramadi in Iraq to ISIS. Given this, and the fact that the U.S. coalition continuously aided the sectarian Syrian opposition knowing full well that this would then lead to an Islamic State, the consequence of which was the predictable fall of Mosul and Ramadi, the capital the capital city of Damascus is now focused in the sights of the New World Order agenda to control Syria as it remains one of the last holdouts concerning total global economic domination. ISIS took the historical site of Palmyra last week, and Palmyra is strategically located. It provides access to military bases and gas fields in addition to highways leading to Damascus and the central city of Homs. Additionally, ISIS last week captured part of the industrial city of Sheikh Nahar in Syria's northern Aleppo province. It has also taken control of the Iraqi-Syrian border gate of Al-Walid. It is the third border crossing to fall into ISIS hands over the last few weeks. According to Syrian opposition activists, ISIS will not move on Damascus immediately, but will instead go to the Gauta and break the siege so it can gain the support of people inside it. Analysts estimate ISIS now controls 50% of the country. In the short term, ISIS will be used to topple the government of Syria and convert the country into a failed state similar to the one created in Libya, short of more direct support from Iran and Russia. Al-Assad and the Syrian government cannot fend off ISIS indefinitely. John Bound for Infowars.com. A federal health panel is recommending that Americans eat less meat because it's better for the planet. And the USDA says that they're going to be updating the dietary guidelines for Americans due, a, due out later this year to reflect that fact. Now, obviously, this is all part of a long-term Agenda 21, as we have covered extensively. It has nothing to do with saving the planet because the blatant fact is the majority of the produce that is in the grocery store genetically modified genetically modified produce encourages farmers to use more herbicides and other toxic chemicals which aren't exactly good for the environment but they're not going to tell you that there's actually been a 1500 percent increase in the use of pesticides since gmo crops have been introduced glyphosate doesn't magically disappear once it's been sprayed on the weeds in our gardens Glyphosate, which is the active ingredient found in Roundup, was linked to cancer in humans. And it's been found in 75% of air and rain samples. So it isn't just hanging out with our plants. It's actually infecting all of our vegetables as well as the air we breathe. So we do have a small victory here, though, because we, we have a lot of people demanding the labeling of genetically modified uh, organisms. Uh, they're also demanding for food chains to remove a lot of these toxic and harmful additives as well. And Taco Bell and Pizza Hut have just announced that they're going to be removing artificial additives from their products. So that's a small victory. I mean, they're still going to be using GMOs, but they have heard the people. Taco Bell says it's going to try the novel concept, novel concept of using real pepper <laughs> as opposed to black pepper flavor in its beef. And they also revealed plans to eliminate trans fats in their food by year's end. They're going to rid their nacho cheese of yellow dye number six. Yellow dye number six is in a lot of foods, but it's an ingredient shown to cause cancer in lab animals. They're also going to remove blue number one from its avocado ranch dressing, as well as carmine from its tortilla strips. And Pizza Hut says it's going to be getting rid of artificial colors and preservatives by August. So this is a major victory for consumer advocacy. They really are, see, they see the writing on the wall. People are paying, voting with their dollars and they see what's happening. So they're probably not gonna win back all of the people who are already avoiding GMOs altogether. But of course, this is good for the other people who have yet to stop eating fast food. And another, I'm gonna call this a victory, I would like to point out, Kylie Jenner, yes, of the Kardashian family clan, tweeted out to her 10 million plus followers a picture about geoengineering. And it's questioning, you know, what are these lines in the sky? Who's paying for this? Why is it happening? 
click on that picture and make it bigger so people can see, uh, you know, why, why do I have to see these when I'm on my way to work? How is it going to affect our health and our children's future? So I don't normally care about the vapid Kardashian clan and how they have zombies of the world enthralled. Uh, but Kylie Jenner tweeted this out to her 10 million plus followers. Um, so I can guarantee there was a collective neck bending by the zombies of, oh. <laughs> so even if it was only 5% of the people who are following her on Twitter who actually cranked their necks to look up, that's still 500,000 people who are now conscious and aware of chemtrails who might ask their neighbor, hey, what is that? Just a very, very small shift in the collective consciousness of humanity that we need to see sweeping change. Jakari Jackson here. We have a new article on the site. Natural food victory. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell to eliminate artificial ingredients. And this is a great deal indeed. We've seen several restaurants following suit because people have concerns that they actually want real food in their food. And the article points out how some of these restaurants use things like black pepper flavoring instead of actual black pepper. So as we move more towards natural food, I definitely think it's good to see all the activists out there. One of the big ones you guys know is the food babe, Vani Hari, has been attacked uh, viciously. They just attack her, say she's a, a junk scientist. As far as I know, she's never claimed to be a scientist. In general, she's just a researcher who does her own stuff. And regardless of what her science may be or may not be, she's trying to make your food better. And even these companies recognize that they have things in their products that isn't the healthiest choice for its customers, especially people who eat this stuff over a long period of time. Case in point, you guys may recall the girl who had a diet of McDonald's chicken nuggets. And after eating these things for several years, she became pretty ill and couldn't figure out why. Fast food chains like Chipotle, also Chick-fil-A, as well as others. Subway, a big one that Miss Hari was going after, trying to talk about the ingredients in their bread. They have changed the ingredients. They had a, a type of chemical in there that made the bread more flexible. She said, take that out. They said, okay, we'll do our best. And I do believe they're planning to take that out sooner than later. So just examples of just people who start off small, you can continue to grow and actually have a voice. You just don't have to be somebody who sits on the sideline. You can actually get into the arena and make a change. You can find more reports on Infowars.com. So we've all done a really good job at taking down Monsanto, Dow, Syngenta, and all the rest of you chemical companies. We're coming for you next. Now, thanks for tuning in to the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber to the Alex Jones channel. You certainly help us out and you'll get all of our breaking reports. And you can also become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your subscription helps this operation. And as always, you can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. You're getting a lot more content there than you will find on YouTube. And it certainly helps us out. Well, thanks for tuning in tonight. And we'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The Bilderberg Group will reconvene in 2015 with their corporocratic mixer focusing on a unified geopolitical oppression strategy and the diabolical containment of their ownership of the Earth's gross domestic product at the opulent Inter Alpen Hotel in the Austrian mountains near Telfs.
In a press release, the Austrian police revealed that security for the confab will be in operation from June 9th through the 14th. As is usually the custom with Bilderberg, the actual meeting of delegates will take place from the Thursday to the Sunday of that week. The police press release notes that security at the Bilderberg meeting will be part of the same operation as security for the much more public G7 meeting, which is scheduled to take place at the beginning of the same week, 7th and 8th of June, in Bavaria, Germany. A statement from the Minister of the Interior notes that in conjunction with German police, extra special police forces will be called in to operate security during the gatherings, known as COBRA. COBRA, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. The G.I. Joe command base is run by COBRA. Do you understand that? And I use a child analogy to get through to you because that's your main programming template in North America. They're on record with that. That was all Pentagon directed. You understand, you work for Cobra. You dress like Cobra. You have the tactics of Cobra. You are Cobra. Hail Cobra. Pulled right out of the fact is stranger than fiction category, the elite special forces counterterrorism police protecting the miserly warmongering power anointing ravenous den of sociopaths is none other than Cobra. I am the leader. I I'm Cobra Commander. I have agreed to this interview so that you might know that I have decided to go public and to have a public stock offering in Cobra Global Enterprises. I intend to issue my own fiat currency, but before I do that, I intend to sue Homeland Security for copyright and trademark infringement. Black uniforms. Black uniforms, ski masks, checkpoints, black armored tanks on the streets, preemptive war, torture, wireless wiretapping, total tyranny is the new freedom that Cobra has taught the world, and now Joe and the Pentagon have stolen my plan and hired Al Qaeda to carry out their operations in Libya which they formerly did for me. Now clearly America and the rest of the system has realized that I am the true visionary. And so I now announce to you and the world the greatest moment in the history of Cobra! Cobra! Ah, I will now sit for president and run on the Republican Party ticket. Eco Cobra, formerly known as Gek, was formed in 1978 primarily as a response to the attack on Israeli athletes at the 1972 Munich Olympics. The Interior Minister's statement also notes that police are considering significant traffic restrictions and even a 30-mile no-fly zone around the Bilderberg meeting to include paragliders and hang gliders. The hotel previously hosted the Bilderbergers in 1988, 27 years ago. 2015 will mark the third occasion that the conference has been held in Austria. Eco Cobra traces its roots to a specialized unit of Austria's Gendarmerie, founded in 1849, a military corps responsible to the Habsburg monarchy. In 1973, a special unit was formed. The castle of Schnau served as headquarters of the Gendarmerie Operations Command. TacticalLife.com reports that although operating mostly under the media radar, Eco Cobra is regarded by many as one of the best counterterrorism units in the world. They also regularly win and always place in the top positions at all SWAT competitions, and have even won the Sniper Championship at Camp Shelby various times. John Bounce for InfoWars.com.